Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about normal vectors. There's two different normal vectors that we're gonna talk about today, the main normal vector and the right-footed normal vector. Now, what we wanna start with is some curve P of T equals X of T, Y of T. And here's what I came up with for my example, this kind of cool looking blue curve that's on the screen. Now, I'm purposefully obscuring the equation for this curve because the equation itself is not important. What is important here are the general ideas that I'm gonna talk about and how you can apply those ideas to any curve that, uh, described by some p of t equals x of t, y of t. Now, one thing you might care about with your curve is uh, trying to get a handle on what is the orientation of this curve? What is the direction of parameterization on the curve? And uh, I can do that by plotting some tangent vectors to my curve. And uh, I can calculate tangent vectors by computing p prime of t for some particular t value. And then I just place that vector on the curve at p of t for whatever my choice of t was. Now I can collect up a bunch of those um, by using this little manipulate I created here. So you can see um, I am plotting a bunch of tangent vectors p prime of t and as I drag my slider, the slider is picking some particular t value, plugging that t value into p prime of t and then placing the tail of that vector at p of t. So a bunch of tangent vectors along the curve. Now as we watch this, these tangent vectors move along the curve here, what we learn is that the direction of parameterization for this curve is clockwise. When you try it yourself, you might have a curve that's parameterized in the counterclockwise direction, or you know, might also be clockwise like, like mine, but this is what the tangent vector allows you to discover. Now, if you're in a physics class, you don't care just about the uh, direction of parameterization, but you also care about the magnitude of this velocity vector because it tells you about the speed of a particle as it moves along this curve. Uh, in our case, for this, for this particular setup, we care mostly about the direction of parameterization, and uh, the magnitude is, is just kind of getting in the way. It's a, a distraction for the particular discussion we're having. Um, it's, it's distracting watching this vector get really long and then really short again and then long. Um, really great if we're talking physics, we're not talking physics right now. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, write the unit tangent vector. Um, that's going to be p prime of t divided by the magnitude of that vector. And the unit tangent vector is useful because we can think of it as a direction vector. It's a, it's a vector that tells us the direction the particle is traveling as it travels along this curve, but we don't get distracted by the magnitude of that vector because um, each of these vectors that I'm plotting has a magnitude of one. It's a unit tangent vector. It's a direction vector. Now, if we think of the unit tangent vector as a direction vector, then think about what it means to take the derivative of the unit tangent. If the unit tangent is the direction vector, the derivative of the unit tangent vector is going to give us a measure of change in direction, right? When we, in a calculus take, in, in a calculus class, when we take a derivative, it's telling us about the change in some function, right? So the derivative of unit tangent is gonna describe the change in direction. The derivative of the direction vector will tell us about the change in direction. So we're gonna define that as the main normal, and that's just gonna be the derivative of the unit tangent vector. And honestly, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to make this a unit vector. So I'm going to write this as the main unit normal, and that's going to be the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by its own magnitude. Um, that's just to make the picture a little bit easier to wrap our heads around. So watch what happens when I drag the slider here. This purple vector is pointing towards the, the direction the particle is going to be changing, you know, the, dire the change in direction for the particle as it moves along this curve. So look how we're flip-flopping here. So you can see right now the particle is, is curving to the right, and so the purple vector is pointing to the right. And then the particle is going to be curving to the left, and so the purple vector is pointing to the left. And it's going to keep flip-flopping as appropriate. Now this is probably a little bit easier to wrap your mind around if we plot both the uh, unit tangent vector, the, the direction vector, and the main unit normal on the same set of axes, so watch. You can see here that this tangent vector is gonna to have to curve to the right to stay on the blue curve, so where is the purple vector pointing to the right? And then eventually we flip-flop. Now, um, where is the 
red vector going to have to turn to stay on this blue curve? It's going to have to turn to the left. So where is this main unit normal pointing? To the left. And that's going to keep happening as we move along this curve. This purple vector keeps flip-flopping directions. It's detecting the change in direction as we move along this curve. Now, if we collect up a bunch of main unit normal vectors together on one plot, we can really really get an idea for what's happening here, right? Um, as we move along this portion of the curve, the change in the direction, the change in direction is always going to be to the right, and then it's going to flip to the left, and then to the right, and then to the left, and then we're back where we started. Um, we can do this in Mathematica using a table, and if you're ever asked to do this by hand, the best, and you will be eventually asked to do this by hand, you might be given um, a curve that looks something like this, and you might be asked to plot a sample of, you know, 10 or more main unit normal vectors on that plot. How do you do it? Well, the change in direction is always going to be pointing into the concavity of the curve. So um, you, could, you could plot these at, by thinking about change in direction um, and by plotting some tangent vectors, but honestly, the easier way of doing it is to just draw vectors that are pointing into the concavity of the curve at that particular point. You'll notice that that's what's always happening as we move along this curve. Now in contrast, we have another unit, uh, another normal vector called the right-footed normal vector. And this one's always designed to point to the right of the tangent vector. It doesn't flip-flop like the main unit normal does. So if we have our curve p of t equals x of t, y of t, we define the right-footed normal as y prime of t comma ne negative x prime of t. Now if you were to take the dot product of this vector with the tangent vector, you would get zero. So we know that it is a normal vector. It is perpendicular to our curve at any given point. Um, and the reason that we call it the right-footed normal vector is look at this little manipulate right here. As we move along this curve, our right-footed normal vector is always pointing to the right of the tangent vector no matter what. There's no flip-flopping here. This is a consistent direction for this right-footed normal vector. Now, uh, this plot actually doesn't show the right-footed normal vector. It shows the right-footed unit normal vector, again, for the sake of simplicity. So I took this y prime comma negative x prime and divided that vector by its own magnitude, and that's how I got this nice-looking picture here. Now, here's a little widget where we can toggle these normal vectors on and off. So we can kind of compare and contrast here. Um, the main unit normal is always pointing into the concavity of our curve. It's always detecting change in direction as our particle is traversing the curve or as our, as our tangent vector is traversing the curve. Um, and in contrast, we have the right-footed normal vectors here, which are always pointing to the right of the tangent vector as, again, we traverse our curve. And if we turn the both of these on at the same time, we could see the places where they overlap and the places where they don't. Um, when the change in direction, when the concavity is, is on the right, then these curves are going to overlap. And when that reverses, well, the right-footed nor uh, right normal vector is still going to point to the right, but now our main unit normal has flip-flopped over to the left to point into the concavity here, to point into the to where the change in direction is as this particle is traversing the curve. Now, if you want to see all the formulas in one spot, I made this little table for you. Um, the first table is just the right-footed normal and the main normal. These, are, these ones are easier to memorize because they're nice and short. Um, but in terms of plotting and, and in terms of utility, you often want the unit vector version, the right-footed unit normal and the main unit normal, so same formulas again, just divided by their own magnitude. Guys, I hope this was a helpful video. Uh, tune in to my next video to see how we can use the main unit normal vector to plot tubes in three-dimensional space. Thanks.